Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. 1 Corinthians chapter 15. For what I received, I passed on to you as of first importance, that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, that he was buried, and that he was raised on the third day according to the scriptures. Do you remember a time when you were healthy, no pills, no aches, no pains, everything was working, your relationships were going well, all the members of your family were happy and doing well? Remember? Think hard. You know, maybe I'm asking a little too much of you this early in the morning. Let's just try and remember a time when you were incredibly happy. Things were going going your way. Something wonderful happened. You got promoted. You got a big raise. You graduated. You retired. You made the last payment on your house. It was a great feeling. It was joy. Remember? Jesus wants us to have that joy because we trust in Him. And now for one of my favorite Easter stories. Jeremy was born with a twisted body, slow mind, and a terminal illness that had been slowly killing him all of his young life. Still, his parents tried to give him as normal a life as possible and had sent him to St. Teresa's Elementary School. At age 12, Jeremy was only in second grade, seemingly unable to learn. His teacher, Miss Miller, had often was exasperated with him. He would squirm in his seat, drool, and make grunting noises. At other times, He spoke clearly and distinctly, as if a spot of light had penetrated the darkness. Most of the time, however, Jeremy was, he just irritated his teacher. One day, she asked his parents to come to St. Teresa's for a conference. As the foresters sat quietly in the empty classroom, Miss Miller said to them, Jeremy really belongs in a special school. It isn't fair to him to be with younger children who don't have learning problems. Why, there's a five-year gap between his age and the other students. <coughs> Mrs. Forrester cried softly while her husband spoke. Miss Miller, he said, there's no school of that kind nearby. It would be a terrible shock for Jeremy if we had to take him out of school. We know he really likes it here. Miss Miller sat for a long time at her desk after they left. She looked out at the schoolyard watching the snow fall. Its coldness seemed to soak into her soul. She wanted to sympathize with the foresters. After all, their only child had a terminal illness. But it wasn't fair to keep him in her class. She had 18 other youngsters to teach. Jeremy was a distraction. Furthermore, would he ever learn to read and write? Why waste more time trying? As she pondered the situation, guilt washed over her. Oh God, she said aloud, here I am complaining when my problems are nothing compared to that poor family. Please help me to be more patient with Jeremy. From that day on, she tried to ignore Jeremy's noises and his blank stares. And one day he even limped to her desk, dragging his bad leg behind him. I love you, Miss Miller, he said. Spring came, and the children talked excitedly about the coming of Easter. Miss Miller told them the account of Jesus. And then to emphasize the idea of this new life springing forth, She gave each of the children a large plastic egg. Now, she said to them, I want you to take this home and bring it back tomorrow with something inside that shows new life. 
Do you understand? Yes, Miss Miller, the children responded enthusiastically, all except for Jeremy. He just listened intently. He didn't even make his usual noises. Had he understood what she'd said about Jesus' death and resurrection? Did he understand the assignment? Perhaps she should call his parents and explain the project to them. That evening, Miss Miller's kitchen sink stopped up. She called the landlord and waited for an hour for him to come by and unclog it. After that, she had to go and shop for groceries and iron a blouse and prepare a vocabulary test for the next day. She completely forgot about phoning Jeremy's parents. The next morning, 19 children came to school laughing and talking as they placed their eggs in the large wicker basket on Miss Miller's desk. After they completed the math lesson, it was time to open the eggs. In the first egg, Miss Miller found a flower. Oh yes, a flower is certainly a sign of new life, she said. When plants peek through the ground, we know spring is here. A small girl in the front row waved her arm. That's my egg, Miss Miller. The next egg contained a plastic butterfly, which looked very real. Miss Miller held it up. We know that a caterpillar changes and grows into a beautiful butterfly. Yes, that's new life too. Little Judy smiled proudly and said, Miss Miller, that one's mine. The next egg had a rock with moss on it. She explained that the moss too showed life. Billy spoke up from the back of the classroom. My daddy helped me. Then she opened the fourth egg. She gasped. The egg was empty. Surely it must be Jeremy, she thought. And of course, he did not understand her instructions. If only she had not forgotten to phone his parents. Because... She did not want to embarrass him. She quietly set the egg aside and reached for another. Suddenly, Jeremy spoke up. Miss Miller, aren't you going to talk about my egg? Flustered, she replied. But Jeremy, your egg is empty. He looked into her eyes and said softly, Yes, but Jesus' tomb was empty too. Time stopped. When she could speak again, Miss Miller asked him, Do you know why the tomb was empty? Oh yes, Jeremy exclaimed. Jesus was killed and put in there. Then his father raised him up alive. The recess bell rang. While the children excitedly ran out into the schoolyard, Miss Miller cried and the cold inside her melted completely away. Three months later, Jeremy died. And those who paid their respects at the mortuary were surprised to see 19 eggs on top of his casket, all of them empty. Did Jeremy understand the implications, the empty tomb, Jesus risen from the dead? I think he did. We can learn so much from children about our faith. Children know how to accept a gift. They never debate about whether they deserve it or not. They never worry about having to give a similar gift back. Give them a gift for any reason or no reason at all and they will attack the paper and enjoy the gift. Children teach us a lot about praise and thanksgiving. They have no problem giving thanks for little things like their sandbox or their jump rope. They have no problem praying for someone they don't even know and remembering them night after night in their prayers before bed. What a gift we received on this day 2,000 years ago. The gift of life from death. The gift of freedom from the fear of death. Freedom to live.
alive. What a joy it is to accept that gift like a child. What a joy it is to come to Christ Lutheran this morning excited to remember, excited to shout and to sing with joy that He is risen. Children know how to trust. Busy streets and crowded Walmarts don't bother them when they have mom or dad's hand. They often have a natural trust of people. In fact, we have to teach children not to trust strangers. Distrust goes against their instincts. In the Greek, the root word for belief means to give one's heart to. Faith is not just a head thing. It's not just knowledge about Jesus. Faith is another level that children have naturally. Faith is when all that Jesus Christ did for us breaks through and travels down from our head into our hearts and becomes love. Then we can believe and trust like children. Everything changes when we love God. The empty egg now makes sense to us. And then all of a sudden, the rest of our life makes sense too. Faith, love for Christ can help us to really live each day. And it doesn't have to be a perfect day. A lot of days aren't. But to know that Christ loves you, really loves you, to believe that He wants the best for you, that He's leading you home to Him, that changes everything. And you can become like a child. For what I received, Paul says, I passed on to you as of first importance that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, that he was buried, and that he was raised on the third day. Miss Miller, aren't you going to talk about my egg? But Jeremy, your egg is empty. Yes, but Jesus' tomb was empty too. Jesus was killed and put in there. Then his father raised him up alive. May our faith always be as simple and as strong as a child's. Amen. The peace of God which passes all understanding keep our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus.